Master of Masters by Isa Isa My name is Jean There is a legend about this tree Did you know? It all started with A young woman and a noble prince they met once by chance, and the prince, having his curiosity piqued by her, gave her a job as his personal maid. The young maiden served the crown prince wholeheartedly ever since they met. Both, together, were inseparable friends with a strong, loyal bond with one another. The young prince adored her companionship and cherished her almost as if they were of the same blood. They locked an oath under the biggest, oldest wisteria tree of the kingdom. Its flowers towered over the sky like a soft rosy blanket that guarded whatever was beneath from the rest of the world. Under that same tree, they promised their friendship would last through the ages. But it was not without obstacles. Ah, uh, sorry, I have to go now. Will you hear the rest of my story tomorrow? The legend says if you promise to be with someone under this tree, you will never be apart. I will be waiting for you. It's my promise, okay? So, don't give me that look. Until tomorrow, Jean. Oh, that was all a dream. Good morning. My older brother Luke was already up and shining, making breakfast gleefully in his apron. He had that happy expression that only a weirdo like him could have at 6 in the morning. After all, he adored any sort of excuse to be a domestic, such as cooking and cleaning. He never complained and did all the work around the house himself. Even if I tried arguing with him about sharing the load, it was no use. Did my dear little sister sleep well? Is she hungry? Does she need anything her dear, precious, amazing, and cute brother can do for her? Morning, I did. Yes, food. He gracefully hurried with the pans and quickly but elegantly presented my favorite breakfast with a little happy face drawn in his with sauce. He had the grace and delicacy only a butler could have as he presented the plate of food. There you go. <clears throat> Done with all the love in the world, just for my cutest sister. Thanks. He gave me a satisfied smile as he sat down in front of me to eat his own portion of food. Oh, my little sister is giving me the look like she wants to tell me something. What's on your mind? How? How he can tell those sorts of things is beyond me, since I didn't move a single facial muscle. But that's how he always was. I had an odd dream tonight. Really? What was it like? He looked at me attentively, ready to listen to whatever I had to say. I hope it wasn't a scary nightmare or anything. Big bro would be so worried. It wasn't. You remember that game, Dogimegi, don't you? Do you want me to go grab my Chiori body pillow to prove my undi- No. God forbid I let him go on this topic. He seemed to like that one girl, Chiori, a girl of the childhood friend trope, 
that my brother loved so much. I have no idea what she is like in personality wise though since I never played the other version of the game. You know how the game always has a legend about a place to confess your feelings, right? Ah, how nostalgic. Of course I do. Well, I told him about my dream, making sure to repeat those words that the person told me in my dream. Oh, how romantic. You dreamed of a person telling you about a legendary, legendary place? <laughs> you know what that means, right? That means you have a childhood friend that you, for some weird reason, completely forgot completely about and now he is the prince-like guy that everyone wants in whatever place you study. Waiting for you to grab his heart in a chokehold so he can go to the legendary place you both hung out with each other in your younger days on the day of graduation to confess his feelings for you, so both of you will be together forever. He gasped for air after talking so quickly for so long. But I already graduated. Oh, but rest well, rest assured. Oh, but rest well assured, big bro would never let you forget if you had a childhood friend. I would remember, for sure. It would be so adorable, my little sister, developing a wholesome romance with her childhood friend. <sighs> Weeb. D don't give me that, young miss. I know you also played Togimegi. And I also know your favorite guys are always the ones with glasses. <laughs> glasses are cool. <laughs> Does that mean your big bro is cool too? I suppose there are cases where not even glasses can save a person. By the way, did you think about that thing Big Bro said to you? You know, traditions are just silly things to follow and you don't need to feel pressured into it, okay? Big Bro loves you and cherishes, cherishes you. My brother talked with me the other day about that. The old long-lived tradition of my family. Working as a noble servant. We were always recognized as the most skilled family that worked in that field for many generations. Nowadays, it mellowed out to only work as sort of deluxe housekeepers, since there weren't many nobles and mansions to work for anymore. Our whole family was filled with the most talented individuals, with a variety of special abilities for domestic activities. Most people from the family like doing these, so that's why it has all been always encouraged for us to try and work with it at least once in our lives, to discover our passion. But I was beginning to have doubts over the truth in this. I was terrible at doing the domestic activities my brother was so amazing in. Cooking, hosting, I almost even burned the house down when I tried cooking for the first time. And honestly, I had yet to find joy in doing these activities. I bet that passion thing was just a silly thing that our ancestors push us to continue their legacy anyways. But if I chose to say yes, I'm pretty sure my brother would be happy. I would be lying if I said I didn't like to see this idiot happy. I'll do it. Really? Like, really, really. You know, if you don't want to do, if you don't want... You, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to at all, right? 
I want to... <gasps> he dramatically put his hands over his heart as if something invisible just shot through it. He then quickly hurried to my side to wrap me in his suffocating hug, twirling me round in an overwhelming joy. You will be like the cutest little maid in the whole world. Your brother will support you forever. He is proud of you. You are trying new things. I know how much you hate talking to people besides me. But everyone should know my little sister's greatness. Because she is the coolest in the world. If any of the masters make you uncomfortable, just tell Big Bro. He will beat the shit out of them for you. Figuratively, that is. Thanks? But you really should be calling yourself Big Bro. You are literally only five minutes older than me. But I am big and your bro. And I have the right to be the big one because I came first. Anyways, Big Bro will redire redirect all the contacts he knows for you. Okay, so it it will be really easy to find a job. Isn't that cool? I guess those are the wonders of nepotism. Capitalism ho! And if you find a partner, remember to bring them to your big bro so he can check if they're creep or not. Do you think I would date creeps? Of course not. But Big Bro needs to be sure, you know? Sure. I put my dishes in the sink after I was done with my breakfast. I'm going out for a bit. I need some sun. Thank God. I mean, last time you went outside was like a month ago, and that was because you had to. I was beginning to worry about you not taking enough sunlight, but... I didn't want to nag you. Too much. You always do that anyway. Be safe. If something happens to you, you already know how your cute big brother will react, don't you? Yeah, but I'd rather not even think about it. I closed the door behind me as my brother waved with a big stupid grin. What should be a good place to avoid everyone on a sunny day, but still be outside enough so I won't drop dead out of vitamin D deficiency? Go to park. Did you even read what I thought? But fine, I also want to go there too. There are some cute little ducklings that live there. I'll just avoid talking to anyone. If I pretend that if I pretend I didn't hear them, maybe they won't find it that rude. I hope. I felt the need to pass by a market before dropping at the park to buy a very essential item. Peas. Ducks there love those things. I remember when my brother bought me to feed the ducks one day with him. He had bought peas as well, and it was the first time I saw a little animal eat so fast. Can't wait to see it again. I sat down at the park bench that was most away from anyone, taking in some warm sunlight. I can feel my bones getting happier already. The leaves rustled around me and the yellow ducklings let out high-pitched small quacks whenever their small beaks wasn't full with food. They were not afraid of humans after all, probably very used to them at this point. They all gulped down the peas I bought like it was liquid. Just as I thought, it was really cute to watch. Here kitty kitty! I heard a male voice coming from behind me that caught my attention. There, 
stood a young dude gesturing to a cat above a tree. His arms were open wide as he looked at the kitty in distress. He was pretty short, so he was on his tiptoes to reach the cat better. Ah! The cat he was calling from the tree trumps flat on his face, and he quickly grabs it so it wouldn't fall down to the ground. Careful, kitty. That could have been catastrophic. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was awful. The cat let out an annoyed growl sound, doing the human equivalent of rolling its eyes. Fine, I get it. He lets the cat down slowly as soon as it lands on the ground. The cat nuzzles its face in his legs with a soft purr of gratefulness. <laughs> How cute. He noticed, he looked in my direction, noticing my presence for the first time. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to b b bother you, I, I guess I just didn't see you there. My head was up in the clouds. <laughs> You see, you see, this cat was stuck in the tree, so I, uh, I tried to get him down. I th think it was a stray. Hm? My eyes were only fixed on one thing as the man talked. The man walked closer to me with a friendly face. What is, what's your name? I'm P- Without a sound, without restraining myself anymore, in a swift motion, I picked up the cat and nuzzled my face all over its soft, fluffy belly, the feeling being comparable to an angel's embrace with its holy softness. So cute. My brother will be definitely upset, but it was very much worth it. Huh? And just as fast as I did that, I gently laid the cat back down on the ground so I could run away from the scene as quickly as possible to avoid talking with that stranger. What? Was my joke that awful that I just scared a girl away? <sighs> that was a close one. I almost had to be social right there. I guess I wasn't very convincing in pretending I didn't hear him. But I can already feel my eyes itching. Welcome back! Why is your eyes swollen like that? What happened? Cat. A very cute one. And what did I say about cats? Forbidden. Yes, forbidden. Forbidden. I'm fine. I'm not. Young miss, you have to control yourself. Cats are cute, sure. But they are like very cute cactuses. They sting. Sorry. After hearing a long session of worried rants from my sickly concerned brother and taking some anti-allergens, -all I sat on my bed and looked at the list of contacts my brother directed to me. Although only two of them were actually available for some reason. Why is my phone displaying 413? I guess I need to fix this later. Hair man. Needs a maid who won't mind his frequent corny dad bad jokes. I will mind them very much. But he could be worse, I suppose. Am I sure? Yeah. I quietly walked to where my brother was mindlessly messing with his phone. 
I would bet good money that he was probably simping over a 2D woman again. Hey, uh, I guess I will go with this one. Oh, you chose already. That was quick. I thought you would have hesitated a bit. I guess your big brother underestimated you. I'm really proud. Let's see. Hi. Sorry, but... Ran out of time. Damn you, cold. Please wait, like, a day so I can transfer the rest of the script into Renpi. I swear. Anyways, consider tro throwing money at me. I'd be happy. Master of Masters by Isa Isa. Hello friends, thanks for watching that video, and if you like my voice acting, you can support me by subscribing. Alright, that's it. Bye, senpai!